Welcome to the battery, aka the voltaic cell. I'm gathering probably most of you were exposed to the battery in Chem 1 and you had some reading or doing some reading in your textbook to help you understand a voltaic cell or a battery. So this is going to serve to just do a little bit of a review in terms of how you do that. Um, you may want to open your book up to page 533, table 17.1 in there is going to be helpful to you. Uh, so that you can figure out how to use that. But we're going to just take a look at, at uh, kind of a, the battery, just common battery, copper zinc battery. Your book uses that as one of its examples. And so I want to take you through kind of a lot of different things related to a copper zinc battery. The way a battery works um, is essentially you take a metal electrode like copper and you put it into a solution that contains that ion. So let's say that it happens to be maybe a copper nitrate solution. The nitrate isn't really important in here, although it certainly exists in there, so I'll go ahead and write it in. Um, and, and then in this case I have a piece of zinc, and let's it could be zinc chloride, it could be a lot of different things. I'm going to keep it simple again um, and make it zinc nitrate. So in that solution there's zinc ions and there's nitrate ions and that's super. The whole point of an voltaic cell is to basically be able to put, well, let's back up, to be able to take an, a reaction, that's an oxidation reduction, because this has everything to do with a redox reaction. Remember, in a redox reaction, there's a transfer of electrons. And so the whole point of a battery is to say, okay, if somebody is going to lose electrons and somebody's going to gain electrons, what if we just separate them so that the electrons can travel along a wire and do some work for us? That's the whole point of a battery. So in order to do that, what will happen with a battery is they'll take a piece of metal wire to attach one electrode to another, and that serves as the conduit by which the electrons can travel. So first thing, if I have something like this, I need to figure out what direction will this happen. Now, you know, we have been talking in our past about a reaction being spontaneous. And so we are going to be looking for a spontaneous reaction. Remember, what does that mean? A spontaneous reaction has a delta G that's negative, which means it has energy available to do work. So the way that we're going to recognize a spontaneous reaction in this chapter is we are going to look at what is known as E naught. This is going to represent uh, essentially, but not in the correct units, our energy that we have to do work. It's going to be measured for us, eek, I'm holding the wrong thing, in voltage. So a reaction, if it's a spontaneous reaction, needs to give us a positive voltage. If it gives us a negative voltage, our battery won't work and the reaction is actually non-spontaneous. So in a battery, we want a positive voltage. That's super important for us. So if you take a look on page 533, I want you to find um, copper 2 plus turning into copper and zinc 2 plus turning into zinc. And so I'm taking a look at that as well. Um, middle of the page, I see copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons turns into copper. And it also gives a E naught, it says R-E-D. That's for, that's for the reduction because the gain of electrons is reduction. So these are all written as reduction, so that's fine. Uh, and they give it to you at 0.339 volts. And then I'm going to also look for zinc. Zinc is closer to the top of that page. So zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons turns into zinc. And when I do that, it gives me negative 0.762 volts for my E naught of reduction. So my individual. Now those individual things don't really give us too much information, but what they do give us is when we put them together so that we have both an oxidation and a reduction, it will be able to tell us if we have a spontaneous reaction that can do work for us. So these are both reductions. We need to have an oxidation 
and a reduction. So what that means is we need to reverse one of these. But when we reverse it, we need to make sure we get a spontaneous voltage. And when we reverse the reaction, we also have to reverse the sign. So if we reverse this copper one, this would become negative 0.339. If I take negative 0.339 plus the negative 0.762, I will not get a positive voltage. So I'm going to actually reverse the other. So let me rewrite this a little differently. So I'm going to keep this copper one the way it is. I do not want to reverse that. Um, and it has 0.339 volts associated with that. I am going to reverse this one, literally the entire reaction. I am going to make it an oxidation. And if I do that, I have to also reverse the sign. So it becomes 0.762 volts. This is the reduction. This is the oxidation. This is the loss of electrons. When I add these two together, the electrons cancel. And if they don't, you would multiply to make sure they cancel back when we did balancing redox reactions. We did that, but this one's simple enough. So my overall reaction is copper 2 plus plus zinc yields zinc 2 plus plus copper. When I do that, I can also add these together. So, oh yeah, see I'm on the calculator, right? 1.101 volts. Positive number. This reaction is spontaneous and will be able to do work for us. Now later on we'll talk about what that work can look like, but today we're just looking at the ins and outs of the battery. Okay, so this reaction will happen like this. So copper is going to gain electron, copper ion is going to gain electrons to turn into copper. Zinc is going to lose electrons to turn into zinc. So one thing I should tell you, I mentioned if you had to multiply to make your electrons cancel, you never multiply the voltage. So that voltage is already kind of in a rate of energy. So we don't want to multiply that. Um, unlike sometimes what we've done in other parts of the things. So this represents the voltage that I would expect to get out of the battery. Now, it is at standard conditions. And standard conditions, as you guys know, are one molar concentration if you are aqueous and one atmosphere if you are a gas. These are aqueous. So in other words, this solution needs to be one molar, and so does this one. Later on, we'll talk about what happens if we muck that up. But at this point, we're not going to. So if I look at my equation, which I'm going to just write up here so I have it, copper 2 plus plus zinc yields copper plus zinc 2 plus. Copper 2 plus is gaining electrons. Zinc is losing electrons. So what that means is the zinc is literally giving off electrons. So the electrons are going to go this way. The zinc is actually turning into zinc 2 plus, which is making this solution become more concentrated. The electrons travel over here. They travel down the copper. The copper does not become negative. But this po these positive copper ions are attracted, and they turn into literally copper on the surface of my battery as these various copper ions are attracted. So the copper ions turn into copper. So we can see the flow of electrons. Now the one piece I don't have drawn in here that's super important, and you might be thinking it in your mind already, is that a battery needs to have something called a salt bridge. And the reason it needs a salt bridge is because notice what happens. On this side of the battery, the zinc is actually turning into and producing more and more zinc ions this side will actually start to feel a little bit positive because of all these zinc ions. Well, if you're a negative electron, you wouldn't want to leave if you have all these positive charges. So what the salt bridge is, and it's often soaked in some kind of salt. Let's say this one was soaked in potassium chloride. So it has potassium ions and chloride ions. The reason that's important is because as these positive charges are produced, in this case, like the chloride ions will actually be attracted to that side, and that helps to neutralize the charge. 
That way, the electrons, in fact, do leave. On the other side, notice what's happening in this beaker. The copper ions are turning into copper, so there's fewer and fewer of them, leaving just these negative ions. Well, these negative electrons would not be interested in going to a side of the battery that was very negative, but the salt bridge helps that. And the potassium ions are going to move to that side to neutralize the charge. In fact, some of these zinc ions will start to move up the salt bridge as well. And some of the nitrate ions will start to go in this direction. So all the negative ions are going to move in this direction. And all the positive ions are going to move in that direction in order to neutralize the charge. So that's the salt bridge. Okay, some vocabulary. There are, I mentioned the word electrodes, there are cathodes and anodes. And so these are the two types. Here's one way to think of it. Red cat, an ox. In other words, reduction takes place at the cathode. Well, who, which side is being reduced? The copper side is gaining the electrons. The copper 2 plus is gaining electrons, turn it copper. The electrode itself is what is going to be called the cathode. Over here with zinc, the zinc is losing electrons to turn into zinc 2 plus. That's an oxidation. So the electrode where that takes place is the anode. Here's a way to think of it. Remember when I said the negative ions travel this way? Well, what are negative ions called but anions? So the anions move towards the anode. On the flip side, the positive ions, which are called cations, right? The cations move towards the cathode side. So that's a way to help think of those things. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, I know, something else that just sometimes comes up. Um, the anode in a battery is designated to be the negative post in the battery, and the cathode is designated to be the positive post in the battery. That does, you guys, that totally does not mean that the anode feels negative or the cathode feels positive. It doesn't. That's the whole point of the salt bridge. It's just a label so that you know which end to put into the battery which way. So negative and positive are just another way to think of that. Um, I think that's pretty much it. You may want to take a, a moment to familiarize yourself with the abbreviation of how to write a battery, which is talked about in your chapter, so I would encourage you to do that. But at least this gives you kind of an overview. A couple of things to just keep in mind. We always want to make sure we get a positive voltage of our battery. We do that by having both an oxidation and a reduction. You're going to have to reverse one. You want to make sure you reverse it in a way that when you do it, you get a positive voltage. Then you know who's being oxidized and reduced, and then you can figure out kind of what's happening in the battery from there. All right, good job, you guys.